Hello again. Welcome back to another video from Back to Basics Bushcraft. Today, I want to talk about trapping and snaring. We're going to begin by talking about the Ojibwa bird snare. It's a very simple snare in its construction, but in its function, it's very elegant. It's comprised of four pieces. You have a standing pole, a trigger stick, your snare, and a counterweight. I'm not sure how well you can see behind me, but I've got some deadfalls, some branches behind me that we're gonna be making our Ojibwa bird snare from today. The reason this snare is a good, uh, a good trap to know is it's a set it and forget it, and it's a live release trap. Unlike your figure four deadfall or your Paiute deadfall or your conibear body traps, more often than not, they kill the prey. With the Ojibwa bird snare, when you snare a bird, or if you happen to snare a, a small game animal like a squirrel, what happens is the animal hits the trigger stick, which releases your snare and pulls a loop around the animal's feet. Now, say you're in a situation where you're trapping birds for survival, and you happen to catch a bird that may be a protected species, the last thing you wanna do is actually kill that bird. This gives you the ability to release the bird live. However, it may be at risk to yourself. An example, I live in Virginia. We have the American bald eagle here. It could be a pretty touchy situation if you trap one, not only because it's a protected species, but that's a predatory bird and they can cause some pretty serious damage with their beak and claws. Anyhow, let's get into making the Ojibwa bird snare. All right, so we have some branches here from which to select our sticks to make our Ojibwe bird trap. Uh, generally, you want your post stick to be about three to four feet high. Um, we've got a couple of sticks here that are about that, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfectly straight stick. If you see, we've got kind of a dog leg here in this. I'm probably gonna use this as my uh, post stick you know, looks kind of natural, doesn't look out of place. Uh, I'm gonna arrange it and, and cut it so that our bird that we're trying to snare is not tempted to land anywhere but on my trigger stick. And that's a, an important part of this trap, is making sure that your bird lands only on the trigger stick. Otherwise, you could possibly set the trap off without ever landing on the trigger stick and, and then you're kind of out of a meal, as it were. So uh, we're gonna start with this stick here and uh, probably be able to use this portion of the stick here as our counterweight. Uh, the beauty behind this trap is, is you can make the trap as small as you need to be based on where you are and what, what game bird you see around. You're not gonna use like a four and a half, five pound counterweight for a, a one ounce or three ounce bird. So, uh, but just for today's demonstration purposes to have a counterweight, I'm just gonna use this this portion of our, our stick here. This is some brush that was cut back. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, cutting our, our primary sticks.
See, this will make a pretty good counterweight. We can just we can just tie our, our snare line to the back side of this. Right here, this would be good. It's got a pretty good weight to it. see here is that dog leg I was referring to and uh, this will wind up being our uh, our post stick now it's about about three feet long which is plenty long enough and then here in a moment we'll get into carving it up now I have several different pieces to choose from here and I think I'm gonna go with this right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I could use this stick right here. I could use I could use this, but I think I'm gonna stick with a slightly thinner stick here. trigger stick, our post stick, and our counterweight. Of course, we've got our snare wire here. So let's get into the, uh, the finer carving of the components. We're going to need to make a hole in this stick here for the top for our trigger stick to rest in. And the way it works is that the tension placed on the string holds our snare loop in place by this and a bird lands on this stick and triggers the trap. So let's get into uh, the finer carving.
and we only need to carve one end of our trigger stick. This is the end that's actually going to go into the, uh, the hole at the top of our, our post stick. So we only need to really concern ourselves with carving this one end. Now you'll notice I'm shaving off uh, about four, four inches, five inches of bark here. And the reason behind that is I want this to slide into the ground pretty deep to make sure that it stays in the ground because once a bird sets off the snare, he's gonna go ballistic. He's gonna start flapping and trying to fly away. He's gonna tire himself out, but in the initial trying to fly away, there's a chance he could get that counterweight up or rattle the trap around and you don't want to shake the stick loose because then he's on the ground and he can feasibly run away. So there are some birds out there that can carry a pretty hefty weight for the size of the bird. We have the osprey here and uh, where I live there's an osprey nest on the top of a bridge and I've seen them carry some pretty sizable fish out of the water here in the river. basically going to carve this into the stick into the kind of a tent stake type shape. Now, the end of our stick where our trigger is going to go, we're gonna to wanna to shave this thin so we can poke a hole through. I don't have a drill bit, and you may not be carrying a, a drill bit or a gimlet set in your kit. You might only have a knife, a pocket knife, or a belt knife. So we're gonna thin this down to be able to bore a hole through here that both our trigger stick can go through as well as our snare line. So we're gonna start by shaving this end bit flat on both sides. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. Something like that. Maybe a little thinner. And that should do. Now here at the top, we're gonna to wanna to make this into a point, a sharp point to discourage the bird from landing on the top of it. Some birds have smaller feet. You could be able to land on something like this, but we wanna make a detractant to that. So we're gonna shave this into a nice little point like so.
<clears throat> should wind up with a hole, you know, about like that. This will give us the ability to uh, wedge our trigger stick in there with our snare line and give us just enough pressure to kind of hold everything tight so that when our bird lands on our trigger stick, he sets it off and everything runs smoothly. Now that we've got our hole board, <clears throat> we have this carved. And we have our trigger stick. You can see how our trigger stick fits in nice and snugly. And once we put the line in there with the counterweight, all of that mechanical tension will hold this our bird lands and the trap goes off. So let's set everything up with our snare line and we're going to use just a simple a simple snare loop and we'll set it all up. So you can see here I've got my bank line and I'm going to spool off two and a half feet or so. I want enough line to make a snare but I also need it short enough so that when our bird sets off the counterweight, the counterweight doesn't just fall to the ground and then leave a loose loop for the bird to be able to escape from. So we're gonna go ahead and cut off, like I said, about a foot and a half or two. That should be enough. Set this to the side. We have our length of snare line here and our bank line. And we've got all four components of our trap. We have our post stick, our trigger stick, and our counterweight. So I'm gonna step back here just a little bit and set it all up and demonstrate how we tie the snare, how we secure it. I want to address the issue of the snare loop. It's a very simple loop to tie. It's just a simple overhand knot along this section. So you're going to make your loop. Just like this. You're going to go overhand with a simple square knot. now we have a snare loop. Once again, it's a very simple knot to tie. And we have about a foot or so of line left on the end of our snare wire to tie to our counterweight. So we have our post stick ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and place it in the ground here. I've got my trigger stick and my counterweight as well as my snare wire set up and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and put this in the ground. Here we go. Nice and sturdy. So little disclaimer it's always a good idea to test your trap before you set it and walk away from it and I discovered that this stick was just a little bit too heavy to be used on this trap today so uh, I wound up carving a, a smaller lighter stick because this trap relies a lot on tension at the fulcrum here on our post stick and if there's too much weight on our trigger stick, that fulcrum won't exist and it'll be ineffective. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our snare wire and we only need it to be, we only need our loop to be about as long as our trigger stick. 
We're gonna go ahead and feed that through here. We're gonna go ahead and kind of tie our counterweight on. Now I'm just gonna make this a very simple counterweight. Uh, I'm just gonna make this a very simple knot, just enough to hold the counterweight on. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. What I will do, I'll make a notch in here so that I've got something that the line can kind of hold on to, doesn't slip off. going to do a simple square knot for today nothing fancy nothing elaborate usually the more elaborate a knot the harder it is to untie it the harder it is to remember in a situation when you need it there we go now got my trigger stick Go ahead and get my snare loop opened up. And you don't have to set the snare loop up on top of your trigger stick yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the trigger stick on top of our line. We want it to pinch that line and not let the counterweight fall. And if we've done everything correctly, that doesn't happen. Very gently, we can take our snare loop, set it over our trigger stick. And the trap is set. Bird comes in, now Kind of had to make an adjustment on the fly. Sorry about the size of the loop. But a bird comes in, lands here, and he's caught. And the smaller he is, of course, the trap will make adjustments. Now one trick you can use if you're having difficulty with keeping all the tension and the, and the rope wants to slide on you, if you're using, sometimes you're, when you're using the inner strands of uh, 550 cord, they can get kind of slick. So what you can do, is you can tie a simple, what we call an overhand knot, I've probably used that term two or three times in this video, but an overhand knot is simply making a loop on the, the line itself and pulling it. And I'm not sure how well you can see that, but uh, here I'll bring it a little close. Make a simple knot like that, just a little overhand knot. There you go, and that'll actually provide a stop point for your trigger stick as well. So when you set it. This little stop knot, this little overhand, it holds some more tension. You have a little more freedom to work with your trap. Now I can uh, adjust the snare loop a little larger to cover the entire trigger stick. It's 
So if the bird lands practically anywhere on the trigger stick, we got it. So, it's a great trap to remember. It's an easy trap to make. Preparation doesn't take a lot of time. You don't need to know a whole lot of notches to carve it. And the materials are always going to be around you. You can make this uh, smaller for smaller bird. You can make it larger for larger bird if you feel so lucky. And uh, it's an effective trap. Now, you can bait your trigger stick if you'd like. You know, to kind of entice a bird back on, you know, to come down and land on it. Just be mindful that uh, if you use bait with any significant amount of weight to it, it might be a little harder to set the trap. And uh, this isn't going to be an instant gratification trap. This is one of those set, forget, come back to a day or so later. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and uh, check back for another video. Also, the knife I was using today, this is the Hella Jürgenmerster blade. Uh, the handle I made myself, it's white oak with some deer antler. I picked this up from uh, Ragweed Forge I'll put the link down below in the description, but uh, check them out. You can uh, you can buy your own knives from Ragweed. They sell Hella, they sell uh, some Mora, but you can also purchase blades from Hella, Mora Kniv, uh, Lari, and uh, Roselli. Uh, give give them a look um, I think I paid somewhere around 40 45 for this blade and of course I had the other materials at home uh, with shipping I think oh also got the brass bolster um, with shipping it turned out to be close to you know like $55 with shipping and everything but for $55 I was able to build an $150 knife so uh, check out Ragweed Forge and uh, thanks for watching keep your eyes open for more videos and uh, take care of yourselves be safe out there and uh, we'll see you next time